live from the Sydney Opera House, it's Sons of Vidya episode 10 spectacular with your celebrity host, Sean Connery. Thank you, Billy. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all gathered here on this fine evening to honor two of the bravest, most admirable men in the history of video game journalism. Brave enough to ask the tough questions, but soft enough to touch our hearts. I proudly present to you, Tom C. and D. Mox. Hey, everybody. Hey, thank you, Sean. Sir Sean, we appreciate that heartfelt opening. It's really an honor for you, I assume. Tom, can you believe it? Ten episodes. I got to tell you, uh, I keep track of podcasts, and we're the only one who's ever done it. Ten is the highest you we, I've seen. It's a world record. Uh, I mean, at episode ten, two, we were we were on the fringe. Ten, that's just one zero away from a hundred, which is true. only one zero away from a thousand. Yeah. Think about that, guys. That's it. Doesn't even take any effort to get another zero, guys. No, not at all. We did the work. Episode one, we put in the books. It became lost to history. Lost at sea. But it the rocketed us. History. History. Rocketed us to the top. Yeah. At that point, we knew we had a combustible Edison. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And from then, it's only been up. Yeah. The, we were already up there, and this this invisible hand sign, they can't see They can't see you making the hand motions. They can because we have a live audience. Well, today. not in the podcast. That's what I meant. Okay. It'll be a video cast. Yeah. Uh, but episode two is the greatest podcast uh, that's ever been received by humans. Yeah, absolutely. And now it's the 10th. They launched a third Viking spacecraft up into, up into space. On one of those gold-plated records to make contact with the aliens just of our second podcast. We've broken all the podcast records. And when we were asked by... Longest podcast. Exactly. And we were asked by Martin Scorsese and Andrew Lloyd Webber and Sean Connery to uh, put on this uh, this gala event of the podcasting season yes. for, our 10th, for our 10th episode spectacular. We were shocked and honored. I would say we were shonored or hawked. Uh, we were probably more Seanard. Probably more Seanard. I thought you were gonna say Sean Connery. Ah, uh, that would have been good. Seanard. Con- All right. We you, guys, thanks for sticking with us. But there was no stopping us. No, absolutely not. We made it thanks to our initial boom, and the kinetic energy kept going. Yeah. We're like a hollow point that also penetrates. We're like a hollow point that, in addition to being a hollow point, also does a thing that hollow points aren't known for doing. That's what we're like. Yeah. Because we've broken all the rules. Hmm. Nice. We're, we're the world's best. Absolutely. And you know what? We're never going to die. Unlike. But you know what people think are dying? What, Tom? What do people think are dying? PC Is games. Is it pandas? Oh. PC games. Mm. And that's the topic today. Guys, this is a debated topic. Yeah. Because uh, here's, here's the deal. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you a little bit there. Please. Please. It's a, it's stepping out with D-Marks. Because uh, some of you that's might... That's real funny. A little bit. Don't talk about my spinoff just yet. Okay, sorry. Keeping it under wraps. We've got exciting news, guys, about a spinoff in the future. Uh, here's where I'm coming from this, guys. For those of you who know about uh, the podcast a little bit, I'm, I'm mostly, and by mostly, I'm entirely consoles. Like, for the most part, if I'm playing a, a PC game, I'm doing it at Tom's house on his computer. I don't really go out of my way for PC games all that much, except for, like, an Age of Empires or a Total War. And again, I only really play it on Tom's house, so... PC gaming, for the most part, has not been a big part of my gaming career. Uh, we never really had uh, really game-worthy PCs when I was around. I only really had, like, you know, consoles and PlayStations and whatnot when I was growing up. So uh, it just never was a thing that I was really all that into. Guys, I'm more of a recent convert. Uh, when I was growing up, I had the Nintendos. But as of maybe... Whenever Battlefield 2 came out, I built a PC just for that purpose. And since then, I've always been kind of into it. Uh, recently building another pretty powerful computer to play Battlefield 3, which is kind of neat. But um, a lot of people think that it's going away. And there's a lot of good reasons to think that, and there's a lot of good reasons why it might be true. Um, I'm coming at this from the angle of, no, it's not dying, but it is being held back very strongly. And I think that's the point that a lot of people are going to agree with. I'm going to have the most stuff to say here, because like, like Dee said, he doesn't know the thing. But he's going to be able to contribute to my incredibly great points. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about a few of the things. I think one of the biggest problems is the fact that... Uh, I can tell you all the problems right now if you want. Well, like, You don't have to go into it. Well, I, well, I have a point that I don't think you're going to touch upon. I, I bet you I will, but go on. Uh, I think well, the, one of the things is that um, 
PC gaming uh, hasn't had the um, cradle to the grave approach that console gaming really has had. I wouldn't have said this. We talked about this a little bit last week about how as gamers grow up, uh, for the most part, mainstream games become more and more mature as the generation, I guess generation Y... Yeah, something like that. As that generation is growing up with games, the games are getting more and more mature because they really did start on like your PlayStations and your Nintendo 64s as more child and teen friendly games. And as they grow up more and more, you're going into more and more mature content. Whereas from my perspective, and I could be entirely wrong, to me, PC gaming has always been a more adult themed thing. And the fact that they have never really been marketing to a, a younger audience that has been allowed to grow and instead focusing more on an adult like, because you would never really, if you were a kid, would you ever play like like, oh, a, a, good point already. like a Monkey Island or something like that? Like a more like point and click, slower paced kid, adventure Some people would have. It really depends. Yeah. I did not. But I feel like that's not mass, mass appeal, whereas, you know, Mario 64, that's something everybody can enjoy. Yeah. It's colorful. It's bright. There's no blood. So parents will feel good about buying it for their, for their kids. And I feel like... Since PC gaming hasn't been, you know, taking that approach that consoles gaming had, I think that's one of the reasons why it's kind of losing its uh, steam in the race against consoles. That's a great point. Thank you. Um, just because... No, th- thank you. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot, maybe a lot of people, their parents didn't let them get consoles when they were a kid. They didn't want to play video games, but they only had a computer. Yeah. Which means they just played computer games because kids want to play games regardless of what their stupid parents say because their parents are dumb. Yeah, remember when you were a kid and you were like, oh, I can play Solitaire on this thing. This is awesome. You're like, yeah, I'll play Minesweeper. Whatever. It's not fun, but I'll play it. Uh, but um, that's probably a, what got a lot of people into it initially because I doubt a, lo- a lot of younger computer users were really aware of the power or the potential of computers back when they first started with Yeah, them. I would agree with that. Um, and there's probably a lot more recent converts like me to the PC generation as of late, too. Um, but regardless, the point that I want to make, and it's probably my biggest point about this, is the reason PC games are at kind of a lull is despite having so much potential and power and having uh, huge modding communities and all this stuff, is that they're going to have to match up with the power of consoles. For the time being, uh, games that are multi-plat are, are always getting released dumbed down a lot. Because you have very, very, very few PC exclusives, whereas back yeah. in the day you used to have a ton. If you had PC exclusives, they could be incredibly powerful now. And the thing of it is, is that... Sorry, I don't, don't mean to interrupt. Please. But the thing of it is, is exactly what you talked about at the beginning of this segment, was the fact that when like Battlefield came out, you specifically built a really high-power gaming PC for playing games like that. Whereas any Joe Schmo can go to a GameStop, put $300 down on the counter, and walk away with a machine that's going to be able to play every Xbox 360 or every PlayStation 3 game that comes out. And I think that's one of the biggest yeah. faults when it comes to PC gaming is that since there's a standardization when it comes to consoles, you don't have to worry about uh, whether or not your components or processors are going to be all right. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately that's the way money works too. Because no one's going to create a game that expli- that only works on PC, which is probably the least popular. Unless you're Crisis. Well, Crisis then released later for 360, I think, PS3. Oh, really? Yeah. I know Crisis 2 did that. I didn't think of They first. all did. Yeah. Um, but that's just... that People want to make money. Yeah. You have very, very few uh, only PC uh, game makers. I think Paradox is. Whoever made Shogun. Is that Paradox still? Uh, no, that's... Creative Assembly. Yeah. They also are, I think, exclusive. I've never heard of a game for a console from them. And you're right that a lot of people would go for the easiness of a console, and they really uh, don't care to do the work to get the kind of great experience from a PC you can get. And it is more work. Yeah, because, I mean, sure, you can go to, like, an Alienware, but don't... If it's, like... Because you, if you had bought the computer that you have right now through, like, an Alienware, it would probably would have cost you three, three times as much as... It, three to four times. Yeah, as much as it cost you to build it, which is, like... 1400 which is still a lot more than a well, console. Well, including a monitor and everything, too. Well, which tr- I, was my choice. True. But even the monitor wasn't like 200 You were still spending 1200 on the actual like yeah. parts and components It definitely is more expensive. Yeah. And that probably turns a lot of people off. And it is it, it does go under a lot of elitism, too. There are some bad fans of everything, but there are also bad fans of computer games, too. Just because there is an elitism and a, a fanboyism to paying so much for something and then trying to, you know, feel like you made the right choice. Yeah, well, that's... That's the way early PS3 gamers were, let me tell you that much. Dude, everyone was like that with everything. Uh, but th- like I said, that's the real problem with PC gaming is that people can find the same game on the other systems and they pay a fraction of the price. And they don't have to do any work and they can just play it. Whereas a PC game, you're going to buy it 
and then there's going to be some kind of uh, DRM on it. You got to work on. You're going to have to install it. You're going to have to install it. You're going to have to. If it doesn't work, you have to find the solution yourself. You have to make it work. That kind of stuff doesn't happen with consoles, and that's a tradition that PC game is unfortunately burdened with. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think one of the things that PC gaming has done really well, and we're going to kind of touch on this actually in our second uh, half of the podcast, just a little foreshadowing. But one of the things PC gaming has done really well, and this is almost entirely thanks to uh, Valve and Steam, whatever, uh, is digital media. And I think that's where PC gaming they really takes off. They were ahead of the off. curve years before. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, and you're seeing a lot of problems what with EA and all that stuff um, due to that whole, uh, you have a parallel economy with uh, publishers and retailers and then retailers and consumers. And there's yeah. a lot of going back and forth between the two, whereas... Uh, since you know Steam has been delving more and more into entirely digital cloud storage and things like that, if you buy a game on Steam, you can play it on any computer that has access to Steam that you can log into. Is that correct? I think you have to reinstall it, obviously, but yeah. Well, yeah, but you have that. Some of them do have activation limits, but that's only that's usually if they have a second DRM, mm. which is ridiculous BS. But for the most part, you can play that game on any computer that can run Steam. It's just you as have long it forever. As, yeah. yeah, and uh, I think that's really. I think that's what PC needs to be moving more and more towards. And I think that's what gaming itself needs to be moving more and more towards. But I think that right there is a sweet spot that really uh, PC gaming can really hang its hat on. And I'm telling you, a lot of people love Steam, not only because uh, they can do the digital media, which a lot of people prefer, but because there's also sales all the time, which is another way that the PC gaming is uh, superior. I sound like a real jerk about that. But it, it's one of the important things that PC gaming has because they don't, because the publisher can make their own prices. They can put on a sale when they want. They don't have to worry about stuff like retail like that. But because uh, they have to deal with the entire market of, of a GameStop and stuff like that and right. worrying about how they make money. Like well, that's said. what I was saying. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. And since EA especially has had, it's been trying to fight so hard against um, game reselling because EA sells one copy of Mass Effect to uh, GameStop. They only make a profit from that once. If you tra- if that game gets traded in three, four times, that's GameStop just making money off of the same game multiple times, and EA doesn't see a dime of that. And it's a great business model. Well, yeah, but I think that's one of the um, man. We really are bleeding into the second half here. We should it's, really. Stop. It's cool. Um, but I think that's we really are though. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, console gaming is really kind of uh, it's shaky right now, just because we're still kind of living in a. We're dealing with things that really could handle entirely digital media, and we just aren't doing that. Yeah, but I'm gonna we're gonna get out of there yeah. so we don't screw ourselves over. Uh, so w- the title of the podcast is gonna be "Is PC Gaming Dead?" My answer is no. Uh, my answer is being held back, like I said. There's so much potential here, but in order to be able to run on most systems, and not the highest level systems, they have to kind of hold themselves back with every generation, and they can't really move forward in that way. But the way that PC gaming will always be superior, and I sound like a jerk every time I say it, I'm not a, I'm not a, a PC elitist. I'm, I wouldn't say it's my favorite console, but I have found a lot of satisfaction with it. But the real key is they will always have the community support and indie games that are easily made and distributed amongst Steam and the uh, internet and stuff like that. And that's, that's where the PC gaming really, really shines because they don't have to go through anyone else. Uh, you can just make a game and release it online. Yeah, and it's... Um... Well, that's another really, really big thing is um, that I feel is PC gaming, and we talked about this before a little bit, but uh, I'm kind of coming back to it after what you said. PC gaming is really, uh, for the most part, it's very much for uh, like really hardcore gamings, but it's also very easy for casuals because you have thousands upon millions of just like little flash games yeah. and little like pop cat games that like my like my grandma loves to play and everyone can play because you know again and a brightly, lot of them are free bright colors free no blood uh they're for the whole family and you don't need anything you don't as long as your internet connection is good and as long as your latest flash drive is uh, flash driver is updated that's all you need to play and people can uh, subsist entirely on that yeah let's talk i'm gonna briefly go into the pros and cons because what are the pros of pc gaming uh here's what you got you got the biggest library of games by far yeah you have the most versatile uh, system yeah absolutely because you can do anything on it you have mods which are unavailable in every other console and is a huge reason why people buy it 
you got community support, like I said, but in addition with stuff like patches and community made uh, fixes for games, right? Which is basically some of the only reasons you can play uh, Fallout in some of the times, because I have so many mod packs for that. I mean, you got Steam. Steam is such a huge thing that uh, a lot of gamers would love to see just a Steam console, just to have that kind of all-around power and that ability to buy stuff like that. No, because one of the things that Steam has done, always done, especially... You may want to shut up about this, for this physical media thing. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't want to d- dwell too much on Steam, because we're going to go nuts on it. Yeah, that's a good point. But um, it, it is much of what makes PC gaming great. It really is, especially nowadays. I think... I, we'll, we'll touch on it more later, but I think Steam really is the breath of fresh air that PC gaming needed to stay relevant. Yeah. So, but the thing is, PC gaming is never truly going to die because people are always going to have computers. Computers are always going to get stronger and easier to, uh, to hang around. And you know what? Even if uh, analysts are correct and we start moving towards almost exclusively like tablets and stuff like that, they're still app games. They're still going to be there. I don't even think... I, I'm, I don't want to seem... Uh, technologist. I don't think we'll ever move towards straight-up tablets. I think people like the kind of computer thing. Uh, well, it's... Don't quote me on I, I, If it happens, it happens, but I think people like looking well, I think at you're gonna... for some things. Well, no, I think you're going to see is kind of a setup where you just have a dock, you put your tablet on it, you have like a keyboard and stuff set up. Maybe. But like that, your, your tablet is just your monitor. But yeah, you're getting stronger, more portable systems. Right now, if you had a good laptop, you could just hook it up to any TV with an HDMI cable. Yeah. And then you know what? You have, a, you have whatever games you had on Steam on your TV. A lot of people, the only problem with PC gaming is that it doesn't go on your TV and you can't play on your couch, but also co-op things, which it is lacking in. Yeah, well, it all, that's something that's always been lacking in. That's only because a lot of uh, PC games are geared around the entire use of the mouse and keyboard as a dual system. Which is confusing now, specifically because uh, there's so many USB ports. And you could have more than one controller in. I don't know why there's not more co-op related stuff in games. It uh, should be very obvious. Because they, they still, on PC games, are more like, play it online or like, do that stuff. You know, that's not its fault. But I feel like there should be mods or something for that. Also, that's a sidebar. Also, I'll give you another reason why PC gaming is never, isn't going to die, at least within the foreseeable future. Uh, MMORPGs, especially yeah. World of Warcraft. They're making a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, World of Warcraft is, for those of you who don't know, World of Warcraft is pretty big. It has like 17 million subscribers, I think, or something like that. Even if it's on the way down, it's got a long way to go. Yeah, and there are still plenty of people who are trying to fight over that dead carcass anyway, so you're still going to have people who, you know... Because I still know people who are still playing like the first Guild Wars religiously. Dude, Guild Wars 2 is going to come out. Everyone's pumped about it. Yeah, I know, but that game came out like seven years ago, I think, or something like that. Maybe that's... People love MMORPGs, and that gets me to my next point. There's some games that are simply better or more playable on PCs. Yeah, I think games where you require a real lot of... um, Precision, first of all. What do you mean? It's far easier to play shooting games on a PC. Oh, I couldn't couldn't, couldn't comment on that. (laughs) uh, If you have a mouse and a keyboard, the mouse is so perfect for moving a reticule or like an iron sights. It's so much more precise than just having a little stick. It really does make that most of the uh, shooting pros would go for a, a, a PC game. Yeah, I wouldn't, but that's just me. <laughs> um, what, were, what were we just saying? Two uh, RTS games. Oh, you're right. This is what we talk about. Yeah, <laughs> RTS games. Uh, I really feel uh, games that require games where you have a lot, a lot of abilities. Yeah. Uh, that you can like tag to like the number keys and stuff because it, it does because. A game like Fallout, where you really only are shooting and vatsing all the time, you know, you don't need a lot of... Uh, they made it work for the consoles. Exactly. Well. But in Skyrim, you have like 18 different magical, you know, attacks, or an Oblivion, and you can key all the... Or like Bioshock. I remember you play, You just got done playing that a few months ago. Yeah. And uh, you could key all your plasmids to the top row there. Yeah, it did make it a lot easier. Yeah, and as opposed to having to switch them back through an admittedly kind of clumsy inventory system. And in games where you have a lot of abilities to deal with, I think that's really good for game, for PC games. I want to say early when you said Fallout, you meant Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Yeah. Because Fallout 1s and 2s and Tactics were probably better for PC because yeah, yeah. they were made for PC. Yeah, that was what I meant. So you got games like uh, Shogun. You could not You could never even dream of playing that on a console. No, because uh, like... They tried doing RTSs on consoles. They had like Age of Kings, uh, um, uh, Civ, or Civilization Revolutions. Yeah, it was like a dumbed down version. Yeah, like everybody hated those and thought they were bad. Also, Halo Wars. Can we say Halo Wars? I thought Halo Wars came out for 
Did it come out for those? It's 360. I thought it came out for PC. No, dude. It's a 360 game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they have tried, you know, doing that kind of um, RTS style. But, you know, it's more a game like Final Fantasy Tactics or, like, tactical games like that where you don't have to worry about, like, resource management and things that, you know, would be hard to do on a console. Things... It, it's just PC gaming is is... It's not dying. No. I'm going to keep saying it. It's okay. not. Things are going to get to where PC gaming is now. Because there's so much attractiveness. And I would say that if it wasn't the most expensive option, everyone would go for it. Yeah. Pro- why? Because even if you didn't like a mouse and keyboard, there you can do you can do controllers. Again, there's no reason not to just because it's so versatile and the other things I can do. The versatility AKA is the key. everything else. Yeah. It, it allows you to do anything. You, you can just record stuff. We had to buy a, a $200 recording box. For the console, uh, for for a computer, you just get a recording program. Yeah, it costs it costs nothing if you do it. Um, the biggest problem with PC gaming is, or not the biggest problem, but it's a huge problem now that's turning off a lot of people, specifically only PC gamers, is DRM. Like I said earlier, because what's happening now is uh, people who are actually paying for games are getting punished for it. Yeah. And what you also have is a problem with piracy. Uh, PC gaming is uh, known for piracy. It well, yeah, and uh, not to you know continually. Uh bow down at Steam's feet, but Steam has proven that retailing games still works on PC. And yeah. it's, it's a model that's continued to work, as Gabe Newell put it in an article that I read that was very smart. He said it's Steam is just all about convenience, because that's mainly why people pirate games, is for convenience. Yeah, what he straight up said was, if you make it easier and faster to get the stuff, pirates won't go to it. And you know what? I gotta be honest with you guys, I was a little bit of a swashbuckler. And I used to. I think we all can admit to that back in the day. You used to download some ROMs or whatever, but then you got. Uh, I, w- I would have gone more for it until I discovered how uh, annoying it was to find stuff places, how much crap you had to go to, how you had to worry about having an illegal thing, but also you had to go through virus filled crap. You got to go and download stuff in some shady thing that might not even work to find things for. Steam, you just press two buttons and you have it yeah. forever. As, uh, the, and no one can give you the crap for it. A testament of Steam is that um, uh, everyone gave Gabe Newell a really hard time because he was trying to get Steam servers up and operating in Russia, which is known for its terrible piracy. And it's extremely successful over there just because it's so gosh darn convenient. People will always go for the easiest option. It's true. People don't want to spend money, no. But Steam counteracts that by having so much, free st- or so much stuff on sale. Yeah. Regardless... It really is one of the reasons why PC gaming is great. It, yeah, it's like I said, Steam is basically what is keeping PC gaming relevant. If you if you still had to buy stuff out of stores, it would be suffering from the same kind of problems. Yeah, absolutely. Except you'd have way more piracy because people wouldn't go for it. Guys, I don't know. I'm just telling you, no, it's not dying. I'm going to say it again and again. PC gaming isn't dead. Um, it's not the wrong decision to ever get into to start getting into PC gaming if you have the money to do it. Because you're getting a totally versatile thing that you're going to use every day. No, and I'll tell you, and I'll go back to what I said before. You know, I'm not really a PC gamer, but there are Flash games on the internet that I love, that are tons of fun, that I've spent hours playing just because they're really addictive, and they're just as, some of them are just as good as quality as a, you know, a console release. You might be saying, well, that's not a real game, but you're wrong, because everything's a game. Maybe it's a casual yeah, game. Yeah, look at, look at a, a Congregate or a Newgrounds. Uh, they make tons of money off of Flash games like that. Hours and hours of your life spent wasted on these things. Exactly. And they're games. So that's gaming. Right? That's gaming. That's what, that's, don't say that's not indicative of PC gaming, because it is. That's part of the perks of having a PC for gaming, is you can play those online Flash games. Exactly. And that counts. Totally counts. No, that's, you can't get those on the console. That's why I brought it up. That's it's a great point. Thank you. Because there's you. tons of great Flash games online, and those are all free. And they're created by the community... And that's something you're getting with this. It's just the most versatile and most bang for your buck option by far. Because now you have stuff like Xbox getting stuff like uh, music players or like no, because like uh, whatever. The, uh, the PS3 has like a browser and stuff, and you can get like Hulu and stuff through. And yeah, that's well and good, but it's just it's just never going to be as convenient as a, a the way uh, navigating a PC works. Yeah, it's always going to be great, and I think eventually. Like I'm saying, PC gaming isn't dying. I think a lot of things are going to work to be more like it. Tom, I have a question. Do you think PC gaming is dying? PC gaming is not dying. Okay. I think more. I was a little unclear. PC gaming is not dying. I think more things are going to work towards that kind of point. No, you're already see. You're like we already gave examples. You're already seeing how consoles are trying to take away from the versatility that 
uh, PC, PCs have. I'm not saying that. Browsers, yeah. uh, video players, YouTube channels. They're trying to get to that point. Games. Yeah. yeah. Guys, if you have YouTube, go watch our YouTube channel on your PS3. Or your Xbox. Yeah. But they're all moving towards that point. Not because they think it's really a thing, but because everyone loves that convenience. Yeah. They're not scared of it, but they just, like, they just know that that's one of the major perks. But no one's going to go and buy a PS3 over a computer because it also has YouTube. No. I'm just saying. I don't know how much more I can say about this, guys, except it's not dying. Mm. We're going to talk a lot more about Steam and the more important thing in this next segment following this world-class break. Thank you very much for the both of you. And now, a musical tribute to the Sons of Video by the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Really? Yes. Wasn't that wonderful? Welcome back, everybody, to the Sons of Video 10th episode spectacular. Now, the Sons of Video are going to tell you about a fantastic new product from them, endorsed by the Sons of Video. Tom, take it away. Thank you, Sharon Kernry. That's not funny. Yeah, I know. I know it's not that funny. Man, I'm never going to be able to impress Sean. <laughs> How could you, man? I mean, the, 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 catalog of that guy's work am i right guys have a little applause for sean thank you yeah thank you that's right you did it wasn't cheap anyway guys uh i'm stepping on your thunder a little bit here but uh we're what we want to talk when people step on my thunder it's an expression i've no, just it's... coined it <laughs> well if you made it sean what do you think about that one i think it's going to stick around thanks sean <laughs> anyway guys sean's uh, a big fan of yours yeah yeah well we go way back anyway Guys, what we're telling you about is the official Sons of Vidya podcast greatest hits collection. Greatest hits. Greatest hits collection. You might argue that every episode's a greatest hits. And you'd be right. But what you're getting with this collection that you're not going to get anywhere else. Anywhere else. You're one, two, get, three, anywhere else. Ready? One, two, three, anywhere, anywhere else. else. What you're not going to get anywhere else, but you're going to get right here is Sons of Vidya commentary of our podcasts. You guys thought we just recorded it and that's it. No, what we've done, especially for this event, is we've gone back painstakingly through each of our previous episodes. We had to suffer through each episode a second time. We've had to listen to it almost one and a half additional times. You think it's hard to hear it. It's hard to say it and hear it at the same time. And what we've been doing is we've been listening to it. We've been reminiscing. We've been going back. We've been figuring out what went wrong, what went right, and what went continually right again. Another th another record. No podcast has ever done that. No, absolutely not. Tom, let's take a... You want to hear some hot word-on-word -word action? Let's take, a, let's take a drink in right now. Yeah. All yeah. right, now what was going through this well, part is that I had recently far. stubbed my toe That's while, think very bad. while thinking about Darfur. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it he was just, at his lowest point. It was a dark day he for He was me. at his lowest point, guys. Absolutely. Oh I've but never seen said, him so low. Number one I know how he feels about those Darfurians. Mm. And easily, it was his favorite easily, toe. Yeah. Easily. The, the, the saying, little ring uh, toe. The one no one should have to see the little ring toe go down because that kind of... it's not nearly as good. It, that it was, game, it was we're talking it was about this number one right now. Here it comes. It's great. great. That's what you're going to get. You, where, where else are you going to go? I mean... Why go anywhere? That was... Some people would call that a gem. I would call it two gems for the price of one. I would call it a couple of gems... Combined in a gem shape. Uh, yeah, I like that too. Yeah. It's like you got six sides of a gem, and in the middle is the commentary podcast. But it's not all uh, classic moments like that. It's not. It's Why not. would we release anything else? No. It's the greatest hits. Sometimes it's also uh, the flubs. The flubs the, and the jubs. And the jubs, but what mostly the, flubs. What about the love dubs? And the love dubs. Let's take a listen to some of that. Uh, Susie Anonymous. <laughs> oh, I remember this Susie part. Right. I just I just could not keep it together, man. Yeah, I well, 
Uh, you weren't on your medicine that day. You had oh. you, you had to literally cover me because I was seizing from laughing so. Hard. I had one of our assistants cover you. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to touch you. Uh, a lot but, of uh, I've, 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 I'm week. just. We're not going to ever touch each other again. <laughs> I find you. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you have a layer of the filth on you. I, I have to avoid. Yeah. Well, that really did contribute to that. laugh seizure seizure that I had here. Yeah. It contributed to my nauseous fever that I had. Yeah. Sean's going nuts. Do we have your official endorsement, Sean? Absolutely. I don't know if we can do that legally, but thank you. Uh, you see Sean Connery, guys. He's laughing at that. And uh, you Do you know want to what? be like Sean? Do you think you're better than Sean Connery for laughing? Because, you know, that was that was me flubbing up. <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> it just happens. We uh, we all laugh at his flubs, yeah. but we all flub up with him. Exactly. But we do it on the internet. And when a Sean Connery is laughing at your flub, that's an honor in its own way. Honestly, it removes any... Any damages the flub may have caused. Exactly. You're flubbing all over, and everyone's like, that's fine. Because S. Connery is into it. Absolutely. He's a world-class actor. And speaking of world-class actors, let's let's take a listen to one of our more crowning moments. And let's see what we have to think one about. One of our more crowning moments. More crowning moments. Let's see what we have to think about this little ditty of a podcast topic. This is there are, in real life, different kinds of gay people. There's now, very poor this part right here, uh, this yes. was when we uh, talked about two this, seconds kind of after Tom was divorced by his favorite chair. Up. I think this is yeah. the main one I kind of stuck um, with. But and I knew it was coming. I think right now... It was a really rough kind relationship of in video games, me in that I chair. Think Bring it just in, was tired of being of sad on all the time. Yeah, but it was irresponsible like for it to leave in the middle of a recording. That's I knew it was coming, though, dude. Lack of, like, I knew it. And, and so I, and I, like that. It, I think, it was painful, like, if but also kind of it was, I, I knew just it. Because, so I kind of, I, I was able kind of to just a, get through um, Yeah, it's, it's yeah, trying to make just, up because there's a character It was hard for all of us, that's all I'm saying. That's great. We won 12 awards for that segment alone. Just that segment or the CD? Just for that segment, when the podcast originally came out. Wait, is this on a CD? I'll tell you what it is on. Just about everything. CDs. Laser disc. DVDs. Laser disc. Blue rays? Blue rays. Green rays. Man rays. Manta rays? Manta rays. Sting rays. Sting rays. Corvette sting rays. Corvette sting rays. Shelby GT Cobras. Um, Even that? Eight track. Phonograph. Guys, cassette you pick, tape. A, pick a medium and send it to us. We'll do it. Yeah, well, personally, I, I have the official word from Sean Connery, that he will sit down with every form of media and he will burn you or copy or whatever and send it back to you personally. I did not actually say that. I was just joking around, Sean. Well, I don't appreciate it. You know what? Sean, you're a team player and we appreciate that. He's, he's, got, he's all business sometimes. He, he knows where his, his, his apples lie. Yeah, he knows what side of the butter his apples are on. Yeah, the right. Exactly. We're on the left. Yeah. Guys, no one else is giving you this kind of thing. No. And you may have seen best ofs, but not commentary best ofs. No. And, We're ahead of the curve. And uh, it's for a good cause. Is it? Each uh, item that we move and sell for the low, low price of $20 American or $50 double American uh, goes directly to our charity, the Sons of Vidya Sons and Girls Daughters Club. Which Yeah. From- I don't know if that's that good of a cause. Well, it promotes uh, literacy and literalness in America's uh, urban youth. No, that's not a good cause at all. Oh. Hmm. The, a better cause would be to stop get, to get them out of the urban environment. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think we have a legal right to do that. Yeah, we do. Come on. Anyway, we guys. Gra- we get them in the sun's helicopter for free. For free. We give them a floating house right above their previous house. Guys... Get on your phones. Get on the emails. Don't miss this opportunity. You want it. Who else sells stuff at their 10th episode spectacular? You want to have it. Only the sons. You want to have it. We want you to have it. So everyone wants things. Everyone wants it. What do you wait? It's your fault for waiting. Stop doing it. Absolutely. You're going to look back 10 minutes from now and be like, why didn't I do it when I had the chance? It's a real shame. Where are you going to send? Where could they go to buy it? Nowhere. You can only get it through here. This podcast? Yeah. Put the money into your iPhone, your podcast machine, just p- put it on there and we'll see it. Yeah, we'll figure it out eventually. We'll know that it's ours and we'll take it once time. Anyway, guys, thank you. Thank you. 3, 2, 1, thank you. 3, 2, 1, uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, moving on. We had discussed a lot in the first segment this, but now we're actually going to do it in earnest. You know what? We're talking about laser discs. We're talking about Blu-rays. We're talking about 
stingrays. And we're talking about CDs. throwing them away. No, you're done with that. No. You know why? Because the second topic today is, is physical media dying? And guess what? The obvious answer. I hope so. It sure probably is. It has to. It's certainly not coming back. No. That would be a really weird chain of events. I have a strange opinion about this, so I want to hear your opinion first. Uh, well, I, uh, well. I it's not even an opinion thing. I guess. I mean. Because let's talk it, about the next console generation. People, what do you think is going to happen? People have made no secret that uh, they're trying to go. They're trying to go all digital for the next consoles, uh, for the next gens. Your Xbox, your your PlayStation fours, your Xbox seven twenties, the Wii U. They're all trying to go digital, and I think that's the way they got to go because. Uh, more and more gamers are feeling more and more disenfranchised by the, uh, some call them shoddy tactics, that developers are trying to use to get around the whole retail situation where a store like a Best Buy or a GameStop can just be reselling the same game over and over and making a profit. That the I don't de- think any publish- gamers are mad about that. I think only the developers are. No, but the gamers are mad at what the developers are doing to try and counteract oh, yeah, that. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. But Tom, tell me, give me a taste on what you think. Okay, you're right. They're all going to go for that because the the companies want to make more money. The the Xbox, the Microsoft wants to make more money for their their publishers. The Sony wants to make more money for their publishers. Everyone wants to make more money, and they want to take the money out of GameStop's milkshake. They want to drink all your milkshakes. But here's my weird opinion, and you can agree with this or disagree with this. I think I already know what you're saying. I think I'm already disagreeing. But I, what I would like is not everyone has a super fast internet connection yet. We're getting there, but what I would, I would still want to see some kind of physical media in stores. Just because I like boxes, I like box art and stuff. What I think they should do is like a USB flash drive with the information on it. What do you think about that? See, there's... It's an inherently dumb idea, but I feel like if... Sometimes you want to go out and buy a game. Yeah. I don't like that idea going away entirely. But I think there, I think there are a lot of problems with that. Uh, not the least of which being the fact that... Um, I'll tell you right now, flash drives are much more expensive to mass produce than uh, discs are. So that's the first problem. So that's honestly going to drive prices up. Okay, uh, I don't know that it is. I think it will because you can get a pack of like DVDs or like Blu-rays or something for the cost of getting a flash drive nowadays. Uh, they're just so since essentially more or less DVDs are disposable objects in the long run, whereas yeah. a USB ideally you'll keep around for a while. What I was secretly hoping for was instead of moving right to digital drives, would be a, a second cartridge age where we could have very low loading times and stuff like that. But you're right. We probably won't get there. Yeah. Because if we have the thing completely on the machine, like the way a PC does, then that's the way to do it. I mean, I think what, I, I think what we really should see and what I really would want is um, a Netflix-style game thing. I think game streaming, I think that's what we really need. Uh, because... You know, again, like you said, not everyone has a fast internet connection. But even people who don't necessarily have a fast internet connection can watch a Netflix at the same speed that they can watch anything else off of a TV. I don't know how I don't know how that would be implemented. There's probably a way to do it. Well, I mean, you can save data to a cloud drive nowadays. Essentially, all you would need is to have a, a, a profile that would have all your saved data on it that you'd be able to access through any kind of console. And this would work especially great with PC games. That's true. Um, there's a lot of potential in, in this new internet age. Yeah, absolutely. But a lot of it, a lot of people in America, I'm talking about Americans, still don't have great internet, which is why we need to get on that. Uh, cause like, I think you're finding more and more, I think you're finding, I think they are getting better. Less and less of that nowadays. I still have not very great internet. I want better internet or I'm trying to you do have great internet. I'm trying to, blah, blah, I'm trying to get this podcast to my internet guys to give me double speeds. Hmm. Think that'll happen? No, probably not. All right. Because uh, nothing I do is going to make them speed up this internet. No, guys, I know that I'm I'm almost clinging to the past by even suggesting a USB thing. Because he's right. We're going to get to the point where we won't need that. You'll purchase a game. It'll always be on your account. You probably have a limited amount of space on your actual physical system, and then you just install whatever you want at the time. Even or even that's a way to make money. Even then, even if you don't have space on your physical system, you can buy cloud space to put all your games, all your uh, saved data, all your screenshots, all your videos. You can literally just buy cloud space. Because here's the secret, guys: uh, cloud technology can be potentially limitless. Here's here's the thing. That's true. But what you are going to have is a lot of people who don't want this. A lot of people are actual collectors. They like owning things. Yeah. And they're going to have a problem in this coming time. 
Because there's not going to be, that's, that's going to totally go away. There's not going to be anything for them. And it, it, I will speak to that in that, yeah, I don't like not owning stuff. I'd like to have physical objects because I'm a guy who likes stuff. Yeah, I There's think... There's nothing wrong with that either, but it is the less efficient, it's less effective part way. of our material culture, and I do... Because here's the deal. Tom and I, we're those people who, you know, if we have the money to afford a new game over a used game that's just as good, we're going to go for the new game. Why not? You support the thing. Yeah, because we like, you know, there's something about opening that, you know, latex or plastic sheath in the game box, uh, tearing off the sticker that keeps the box shut. There's something about that experience that you're not going to have anymore. Yeah, and additionally, you're going to get rid of manuals and stuff, which I've always liked. Yeah, but I mean, people are already getting away, doing away with manuals. Yeah, they can stop that. Well, yeah. But it's just going to go. It's just going to go. That's it. Yeah. Because it's, it's just, it saves money all over the place. You're saving actual physical gas. No, but will prices go down? Of course not. No, because there's... Uh, what are your overheads? There's limitless amount of stuff, and it's... Bad from some because it does harm jobs in some cases, like you know, drivers and the where, video game truck drivers, yeah, your video game delivery men, your video they're losing game warehouse jobs. workers, they're all losing jobs. But you know what? That's that no one works in you know, textiles for the most part. That's almost all automated nowadays. It's just a sign of the times, and people aren't willing to let go of a lot of that stuff. Are you gonna get new jobs like internet video game manager, internet warehouse man? All, you're going to move around all those bits and bytes. You got to move this over to cloud storage. <laughs> Plug that wire into there, Billy. No, it's a problem. Because you are going to lose jobs, but that's just how it is. We're, we got computers now. They're great. It does suck. I do, I do not look forward to the, the coming of not owning physical things. Because even Steam, you're a little upset that you're not owning a physical copy. You're pretty much buying a license to play the copy. Yeah. You're not even buying the game. Which is also extremely irritating. But let's talk briefly about Steam. But that's the price you're paying for, you know, a, a substantially great service. But uh, but what uh, what can happen is they can just deny you the right to do it if you break their rules. That's what Origin does sometimes. Origin, well, yeah, that's true. Origin's widely known. If you have one of their games, if you even go on their forum and and kick up a fuss about something or behave badly, they can deny you access to your games. That's EA telling you, yeah, I know you bought this, but you're a jerk. So no, you we talked about this in the first, in our Lost podcast. That is wild overuse of power. No, we talked about this in the, our Lost podcast, how if you're caught cheating on Mass Effect 3 in the multiplayer, you can be banned from playing single player, which is outrageous. Yeah, you paid money for that, and now you can't, it, it's your, it should be Even your property. Even if you didn't cheat it. Even it, if you weren't the one cheating. Yeah, it should be your property, but that's totally gone. That concept's gone. And that's a real issue to me, an American, you know? Yeah, but I think that, uh, you know, in some ways that's kind of good because that's, we talked about our game. Yeah, if you're a commie. No, we talked about game, uh, online etiquette and if people, you know, don't play by those rules and they get banned, so be it. That's their, that's their consequence for not following the rules that everyone else has to. No, I'm not even going to give you this. Never should it be that you can't use your property in a single player sense. No, absolutely not. In, in no way should you be encroaching on somebody else's fun. That's no, wrong. No, I'm not talking single player. I'm just talking strictly for like Well, when you have these online real tailors, real later, real what you're getting is they can ban you for whatever they feel like they w- want to. And that's a huge issue. They can stop you from accessing your product or the things you purchase with your money that you should own but you don't because you bought the license to it if you're in some way encroaching on their rules. And that's a major issue. No one could tell me that I couldn't play Super Smash Bros. Brawl because I own that disc. Right. No one's going to come over here and say, yeah, but you said the F word online one time. They're just going to say, well, that sucks. Whatever. They're not even going to notice it. And it rightfully shouldn't because it's mine. Yeah. I went out there and I have the disc. No, and don't get me wrong. It's not an entirely perfect system. But honestly, I think between the two, a lot of, a lot of grievances from what I hear in the gaming community nowadays can easily be addressed through the use of digital me- exclusive digital media. Here's what I want. I want no loading screens. How can I get that? Uh, Guys, let's just work on that. Yeah, that's true. Everyone hates loading screens. Seriously, if I had Fallout... Imagine Fallout New Vegas with no loading screens. Dude, that... It would be a dream. That was, that was what it was like once upon a time for me. It would be I, amazing. I remember back when I first got the game, before they did all the stuff... I, in the strip, you know how I have those doors that separate? Yeah. I, there was like one second of that flashing roulette wheel, and then I was already in, baby. Dude, just imagine if there wasn't a roulette wheel at all. Everything was open. You just walked into it, and it was it was good. Yeah. 
That's what I want. And I feel like maybe with digital things, you won't have to have any disk read times. You might be able to do something like that. Yeah, I feel but like still loading is that a especially. I feel like that especially would be great for a cloud for a uh, Netflix style system. I just don't know that they can actually do that. I see very few reasons why they couldn't do that. It's, I think still it has to process and load all of it and create it. What I'd like is for that to be something else. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, I'm not a. I don't know how guy. computers yeah. work. It, the answer is yes. We all know physical media is dying. Right. Uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. So I'm sorry if you invested big bucks into the VHS market last year. You're not, you're not going to make it back. It's a real shame. You're not going to make it back. Guys, we need to move on. Sean? Let's talk about plugs. Oh, yeah. Let's do, let's do. We totally didn't do it last week. Yeah. Guys, real quick. We're going to be quick about it. We told you before, send us emails. We really want to see those emails, guys. Sonsofidiot at gmail.com. If you email us, fine. We won't send you anything. I like We've big you, emails and I cannot lie. We offered you gifts if you sent us emails. So now we're going to rescind the offer. Just send us the emails. We're not going to send you anything back. Yeah. We might reply if you're lucky, but now we're mad at you. Send them. Send me big jerks. I don't s- care. We might send signed headshots digitally somehow. I won't. Because okay. I'm so mad at you guys. Fair enough. You guys, we, have, uh, we know you're there. You're hearing me. Look at, look at it. Look at your screen. You're seeing the podcast. I'm talking to you. We're not robots. I'm talking to you. Send the email. Sons of Vidya. If you don't know how it's spelled, look right at the title. It'll be right there. At gmail.com. Guys. Any oh. email. Be like, I like your stuff. Be like, I don't like your stuff. I'm not going to tell you about it. Don't send that email. That's what I would send to myself passively aggressively. Don't send it. Guys, send also, it. check out the blog. Blog. Sons of Idiot at bl- dot blogspot.com. A lot of great content. Qua- Original content. Content. Content on there. Guys, what we do at Sons of Idiot is we take video games, and we don't talk about industry. And we break it down. We don't talk about this crap. Son. Video games are our art. We like to talk about the lore, the world. The theory. We talk about game theory. That's the kind of thing you're getting from a blog here. That's the kind of thing D. Marks likes to write about, and I will write about it eventually. Yeah. That's what you get. Guys, you know why you're here? Because it probably you got here from the YouTube. Yeah, probably. Go watch our YouTube if you haven't yet. We're still knocking it out of the park every time. We got tons of Let's Plays. We got tons coming up. Guys, you subscribe. Got all the comedy. Subscribe if Definitely you like subscribe. us even a little bit. Definitely subscribe. Because here's the deal. I know I've misspelled the word subscribe many times, and I know that's my problem. That's something you have to deal you with. You can undo years of embarrassment for me by pressing that button just once. We're going to fill your feet up with videos, and I'm sorry, but that's all for you. We're ton- tons of content. We got stuff you like. We got funny jokes. We got great quality video and sound. Yeah, knocking it out of the park You see again. some of these Let's Plays, and they look like you're a tinfoil man, and it sounds like a tinfoil man's wife. You don't want to watch any of those things. You don't want to hear any of that. Tin man, what's your mom said? That's what But like, you don't want that. You don't want that. We got the highest quality for you. No, it's like listening to uh, Koi Pond. That's how clear it is. It's like you're playing the game with us. It's like we're in the room. Yeah. Go look at it. Just uh, It's Sons of Idiot. Just go- you Google it. Google it. YouTube it. We're all on there. It's the highest result. We're going to find it. Guys, you know why you're really here, though. I, th- I think uh, uh, Sean uh, voiced some opinion on uh, possibly introing this, if you don't mind. Did he? Yeah. Well, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason I listen to the podcast. If not, if not for the insightful topics every, each and every week, each and every Tuesday, it's for when Tom C and D Mox go down a list of video games. It not it knocks my socks off every time. And this week they're doing the most wanted FAQs off of games off of Game Facts. That means it's time for speed, speed reviews. reviews. Tom, Minecraft, go. Minecraft is a game where you're a miner and you gotta craft your way out of some crazy adventures. Ten out of ten. Which or two? Uh, wait, which two? Two out of ten. Ugh. Risen two, dark waters. Uh, I really like this game. Water's really dark and I think I got stung by a jellyfish. Two out of ten. Uh, Starhawk. I don't think hawks can live in stars. Uh, I was really depressed because it's just a bunch of hawks floating around dead. So I got him a zero out of ten. Warriors Orochi three. Um, you're the legendary Warriors Orochi, a group of ragtag friends who've got to get to the neighbor's house to get that baseball. So it's three out of ten. Kingdoms Hearts three Ds. Uh, well, you have three Ds worth of kingdoms, and you have to get the heart to the princess for a heart transplant, or else you will die. Seven out of ten. 
Fire Emblem Kakuse. Uh, this is probably another Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem is a great series. Uh, I don't know this one, so I'm going to pretend that it's the one that I played, so 10 out of 10. It's J3. This is the or third. Gaia, whatever. This is the first time that you ever dissed Gaia, and she is mad. And now you and her are going to have the breakdancing competition of a lifetime. 3 out of 10. Tom, Sniper Elite V2. Um, Sniper Elite V2 is this game. It's uh, They always advertise it on Steam, and I don't want to play it, despite liking everything in it. So 1 out of 10. Sorry, guys. But guess what? We'll see you next week. We want to thank everyone for listening. We want to thank Sean Connery for hosting. We want to thank the London Philharmonic. We love all you. Uh, we just thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you later. Adios. Bye.